life. What a mess. Mess on whose part? Surely we can't rightly charge God with the mess. For scripture says God made man upright. Well then, the mess must be ours. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Their ways are corrupt. Violence, pain, drunkenness, divorce, abuse, godlessness, emptiness, no restraint, no vision, no direction, no purpose, no joy, no hope, suicide. Yes, we are suffering the consequences of a godless generation. Scripture says it is not in man to direct his own steps. Jesus said Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you may have a better way of living. And there is a better way of living. Welcome, I'm Pastor Ian from the Living Word Church in San Pedro. We're about to have a good time in God's Holy Word. Today I want to talk to you about a steadfast face. Very important. What's your view of God? Many times our view of God is a third party. Many times it's incorrect because we listen to people that have had information about God from other people and not personally. Well, I want to allow you to know God in a way maybe that you've never known Him from Scripture today. So lend me your heart for a short moment. A steadfast face. First of all, let's define the word steadfast because it's vitally important. The word steadfast means a fixed direction, steadily directed, firm in purpose. Now, when we talk about something that is fixed, well, the only thing I could probably help you with to understand the word fix is maybe the wall of a house, the corner of a house, especially a concrete house. You go and you try to push that wall, it will not move because it's fixed in a certain position. And when I talk to you about a steadfast face. As a believer, I want you to understand that God's face is fixed towards you. It's steadfast towards you, whether it seems like or not, whether you feel like or not, God's face is fixed. It's steadfast towards you his children. Now my text for this message is taken entirely from Psalms chapter 13 verse 1 through 6 and I want you to listen carefully from your heart. The psalmist says, O Lord, how long will you forget me forever? How long will you look the other way? How long must I struggle with anguish in my soul, with sorrow in my heart every day? How long will my enemy hear or have the upper hand? First of all, this psalm cannot be pinned to any one circumstance or situation in the psalmist's life. And I believe that's very, very important because it tells us that like the psalmist, our lives as believers will be filled with struggle on our journey towards heaven. We will have adversity. We will have pain. And many times because God's uh, Time is not our time. His ways are not our way. We tend to think that God forgets us, that He looks the other way, and we don't even know if He's going to help us through. And this was the situation with the psalmist. He was going through a roller coaster ride. He was going through some adversity in his life, probably sickness on his body, and it was prolonged. And it seems like no matter how much he cried out to God, there was not an answer. In essence, for the first two verses of the psalm, 
It is trying to tell us that the psalmist was experiencing what he interpreted to be a delay concerning the answer of God. And it continues to tell us that the psalmist concluded that maybe this delay was a denial from God. My brothers and my sisters, my friends, if we are not careful, we can interpret God's delay to be a denial on our part, which would be incorrect. And so the psalmist cried out to God, how long, how long, how long, how long, God, will this happen? How long will you forget me? How long will you turn your face the other way? Denial can be very devastating and destructive to our lives if we tend to think that God, God has denied us. Delay can be very devastating in our lives. The psalmist, because of the delay, was accusing or charging God with certain things that God really wasn't doing. In Psalms 13 verse 1 and 2, he says, God, you forget me. God, you're looking the other way. God, I'm struggling with anguish. Can't you see that my enemy has the upper hand in my life? So because of his pain, because of his anguish, and because of what seemed to be a delay from the throne room of God, he was charging God with things that was not a part of God's character. Delay. Delay can be devastating. Listen to what Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12 says. It says, hope deferred. Hope delay makes the heart sick. Now listen, we can be sick in the body. We can be sick in our circumstances and situation. But if our heart becomes sick, we're in serious trouble. And this is what was happening to the psalmist. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 22 says, A cheerful heart is good like medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. Again, delay can be very devastating if we do not know what to do with delay. When we cry on to God and we do not get an answer, our spirits can be crushed. It can be broken and become devastating. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 14 says, The human spirit can endure a sick body, but who can bear it if the spirit is crushed? Again, very important for us to do, know what to do with delay when we have no answer from God and certainly not to charge God with a wrong character. Psalms chapter 13 verse 3 and 4, the psalmist continues. He says, God, turn and answer me. Listen to that. Turn and answer me, O Lord my God. Restore light to my eyes or I will die. Don't let my enemies glout saying we have defeated him. Don't let them rejoice at my downfall. Now here's what was happening. Now you need to imagine this with me. You need to picture this with me. The psalmist in the psalm had a dynamic relationship with God and everything was going well until adversity struck. Until problems came into his life. Until the enemy started targeting him with all kinds of things. And you know that's what the enemy is going to do in our life. And the, 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 the psalmist lost focus because of the enemy. And because of all of the arrows, the flaming arrows and fiery darts that he was shooting at him. He lost focus. He actually turned his face away from God to look at his circumstances and his situation. And in the midst of that, here's what happened. He started blaming God that God had turned his face away from him. Can I tell you something that I want you never ever to forget? God is not like human beings. God does not have a neck. God does not need a neck. We have a neck. We need a neck. Why do we need a neck? Because we cannot see everything at the same time. If I'm focusing on one thing, in order for me to look at another thing, I need to use my neck and turn to look on that thing. And then by looking on that thing, I'll not be able to look at the thing I was formerly looking at. We have necks, but God does not have a neck. And the psalmist 
turned his head away from God and started looking at his circumstances. And his circumstance became so overwhelming and so frightening and so real that he charged God, God, you've turned away from me. But the truth is the one that had turned his neck was the psalmist, not God. All the while God was looking at him intently, ready to help. But because he had turned away from God, he felt like God was no longer there. And that's what we do sometimes in our lives. Sometimes when we're going through a prolonged adversity, sometimes when the enemy comes in and attacks our marriage, when he comes in and attacks our finances, when he comes in and attacks our relationships, when he comes in and attack our family when he comes in and attack our health sometimes these sicknesses these attacks last for a long time and because they're there and because they're real we turn our heads from God and we start to focus on all the troubles of life and it becomes more real than God and we start to cry out to God guy God why have you turned away why have you forgotten me when in reality we are the ones that turn our head we are the ones that look at the situation and forget to look at God and this is what the psalmist was going through he was accusing God of a flawed character he was accusing God of turning his face away from him in the time that he needed him the most and God would never ever do that God has a steadfast face you and I need to understand that. You might say, Pastor, how can I know that what you're saying is true? Well, look at this. Matthew chapter 14, verse 27 through 31 says, And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. What was happening in this scripture? The disciples were on the ocean at night with very strong winds and troubled waters. The waves were raging. And to make matters worse, when they lifted up their eyes into the darkness of the night, they saw what they thought was a ghost walking on water. And they were even more frightened. And right at the heights of their fright, the Bible says that Jesus came and Jesus said to them, be not afraid, it is I. And so Peter said, listen to what Peter said. So he said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you. And Jesus said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on water. Now listen to that. Never had any man walked on water. While he was looking at Jesus, he walked on water. But listen to this. But when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and started to sink. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and helped him up. So watch this. Jesus said, come. And Peter's face was fixed on Jesus. And while his face was fixed on Jesus, the Bible says that he actually walked on water. But when Peter turned his neck, when he turned his face and looked at his circumstances, the Bible says he started to sing. Who turned their face? It wasn't Christ. Christ was always fixed towards Peter. How do I know that? Because the Bible says when Peter cried unto him, immediately, not after a while, immediately Jesus stretched out his hand. Why would, was Jesus able to immediately stretch out his hand? Because all along, even when Peter turned his face, Christ had a steadfast face towards Peter. He was always looking at Peter. You see, he was frightened and he started to be overwhelmed by his circumstance when he took his eyes off of God. So you and I need to be very careful that the same thing does not happen to us. God has a steadfast face towards us. He will never ever turn away. He is fixed in our direction. And we must believe that. We must hide that in our heart. No matter what the adversity, no matter what the flaming arrows, no matter what the fiery darts, no matter how long the enemy attacks us, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. We need to keep our eyes on God. Why? Because God never takes his face off of us. He never turns his head. God does not have a neck. Now watch it. The psalmist all of a sudden regained the focus and started believing again. And his faith 
became strong. In verse 5 and 6 of Psalms 13, it says, But I trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because he has been so good to me. Now I want you to know something. The psalmist situation had not yet changed. The only thing that changed was his direction. He regained his focus and even in his prolonged trouble, he started looking at God again. And all of a sudden he became strong and he started declaring prophetically I will rejoice I will sing you see it wasn't God that turned his face away from the psalmist it was the psalmist that turned and started look at what the enemy was doing but when he regained his focus all of a sudden he became strong again and even though his circumstance had not yet changed he was strong enough had faith enough to believe that God will bring him through, would bring him through it all. And that's the way God really is. God has a steadfast face towards us. Now, concerning the steadfast face of God, I want you to be beyond the shadow of a doubt. The truth. I want you to hide it in your heart so that you may never forget. So that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God will be able to raise a standard against him from the knowledge you have of who Christ really is and his steadfast face towards you. Friend, if you're a believer, let me tell you something. God will never leave you. He'll never abandon you. He'll never forsake you. And you have to believe that with all your heart. You have to choose to make that a reality in your heart. So let's, let's look at several scriptures that will let us know that God's face is steadfast towards us. And you be encouraged. Psalms 34 verse 15 and 16 says, The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and His ears are open to their cries. Now listen to verse 16. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. To Cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. So notice, it says God's back is always towards the evil. His face, his eyes are always towards the righteous. Now, in this scripture, it says the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. It didn't say the eyes of the Lord are on always on the righteous but while I meditated upon this I realized that neither did it say that the eyes of the Lord are sometimes on the righteous so we conclude that God's face is steadfast it is always towards his children and never will be turned now, now listen to this in your struggle think about the reality of this truth if you hide this in your heart in your struggle Sometimes in your prolonged struggle when God seems to be nowhere, where God seems to have forgotten you, where God seems to have turned his face in the other direction, you need to remember the truth of his word. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. His ears are open to their cry. And you need to allow that to build your faith. It doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter what reality seems to be. The truth is, God's eyes are on me in my situation. He will not turn away because he does not have a neck. Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 15 says, Never can a mother forget his nursing child. Can she feel no love for a child she has born? But even if that were possible, it says, I would not forget you. Now you think about that. Now, I know this is a reality because one day we had a, a she-dog on our veranda and had just born several pups. And we had a friend whose son came to visit us, not more than 10 years old. And that son did not know the she-dog was there with the pups and climbed, just walked right up the stairs, opened the gate and stepped in. And the moment he stepped into that veranda, the she-dog leaped at him because she was protecting her pups even though he was not there to endanger the pups. And that boy luckily, thankfully, just leaped over that veranda and just about an inch stepped out of the way of the, the bite of that dog. Why did I share that with you? I share that 
because I want you to understand if even a she dog, if even an animal will protect their pups at all costs, don't you think God who loves you and cares for you will protect you at all costs? And that's why the scripture says that even if a woman could possibly forget her child, please know, I, your daddy, I, your father, will never forget you. I'll never turn my face away from you. I'll always be with you through every circumstances in life. Isaiah chapter 44 verse 21 and 22 says, Pay attention, my child, for you are my servant. I, the Lord, made you, and I will not forget to help you again. Bury that in your heart. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, go beyond what your circumstances look like and believe that what God says is true. He says, I've created you. You're not a mistake. I did not wind you up like a clock and walk away from you. I'm with you. I'll help you. I'll never forget you. Truth takes precedent over facts and God's word is truth. God says, I'll never leave you. I'll help you no matter what you're going through. And I know that maybe it seems like God is delayed, but really he's working on your behalf and will come through just at the right time. But you must believe. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20 says, these te teach these new disciples, whether you're a new one or an old one, teach these new disciples to obey all that I've commanded them. And be sure of this. He says, I am with you always. How long? Always. He says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Through high waters and deep valleys. He says, and through the fires and the flames, I will be with you always. Friend, you can be reassured. You might not understand everything about God. You might not understand why he doesn't show up when you need him to, but he will. And I can tell you, based on God's word, God's face is steadfast. He says, I will be with you always. Listen to what Psalms 139 verse 8 through 10 says. It says, if I go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down to hell, you're there. He says, if I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me. Your strength will support me. You see, as a child of God, we can't run away from God. Our circumstances and situation, our problems cannot cover us from God. God's everywhere and he's there for us and he'll be there just when we need him the most and we need to believe that. We need to receive that. We need to confess that. We need to hide it in our hearts and let it take precedent over our situation because God cannot be mocked and God's face is steadfast. He'll never turn away from us. He'll never look the other direction. We are the apple of his eyes my friend and God is working on your behalf now listen to what Mark chapter 15 verse 33 and 34 says at noon and here is how you can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God will never turn his face away from you at noon darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock then at that time Jesus called out with a loud voice my God my God why have you forsaken me listen there has only been one time God has turned his eyes away from someone in history in history, only once has he turned his eyes away from a believer, and that was from his own son. Why did he do that? Because on that dark day on Calvary 2,000 years ago, the sins of the world of eternity past right up to eternity future was placed upon his son. And the Bible says God cannot look at sin. And when sin was placed upon Jesus Christ for the first and only time, God turned his eyes away from his son. Why did he do that? that to guarantee us there will never come a time in our lives when he will turn away his eyes away from us. He forsook his own son one day on the cross for a moment of time to guarantee us that he will never turn his face away from us. Now, listen to the scripture. It says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 32, it says, so since God did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all. Won't God 
also give us everything else. Now you think about that. Think about what you're going through. Maybe you might think, well, maybe it's, it's not God's will to heal me. Maybe it's not His will to, to deliver me or, or to set me free or to provide for me. No, those are all lies. If God gave you His Son, if He forsook His Son to guarantee you that He'll never... Uh, uh, look the other way from you, then you can rest assured it is God's will to heal you. It is God's will to provide for you. It is God's will to deliver you. It is God's will to, to just bring you into a life of more comforts than trouble than you are in at this moment. Don't settle for foolish excuses. God has not turned away His eyes. He is not looking the other direction. His face is steadfast towards you. It is fixed towards you and God is about to help you. Now I need you to receive that and believe that with all your heart God will come through for you I'd like to take a short moment to pray about that issue in your life right now Father first of all I pray that through the anointing and the power of your Holy Spirit that you will instill this truth into the hearts of that person watching right now into the hearts of your believers listening Lord instill the truth that you have a steadfast face towards them instill the truth that you have not forgotten them that you have not looked the other way that you'll never abandon them Lord God and let that truth set them free right now may faith rise up into their hearts Lord God and that you would bless them in their situation I declare that their situation is about to change in the name of Jesus and Father I give you all the praise and glory for it in the magnificent matchless awesome highest name of Jesus Christ amen Dear friend, be encouraged. Find a Bible-believing church. Join that church. Come on, worship the Lord. Read the Word of God, and you be encouraged in your faith. Be blessed until we meet again.